What's up, guys? Just wanted to make a video. My new Navian NFC 250 200H combi boiler setup. Um, picked up this boiler at my local supply house. I did order one online. It showed up damaged, missing parts. So if you're, you're getting a piece of equipment like this, definitely recommend picking it up at your you know, local supply house. Ordering these online tend to be an issue. So uh, let me take you, this is the NFC combi boiler, NFC 250, 200H. Um, let's take you on a tour of the piping here. Down low, this is the uh, stainless steel primary manifold. Uh, it does not come with the unit. You can order it separate. It's about 500 bucks. Uh, these two service valves for the, uh, the heating side, those are included. So the uh, two service valves with the, uh, you know, Hose drains connected there. The, this is the uh, domestic hot and cold water. Uh, these these service valves were not included. Those are going to be extra. So you guys are going to have to pick those up on your own. Um, these also have hose drains. The hot one has a hose drain on the back. That's the best way I've found to set this particular unit up. Some of the uh, some of the other uh, Navians, I believe it's the uh, N, um, NHC or... NHB or something like that. The uh, the ports are all the way in the back. This one is kind of up towards the towards the middle of the uh, unit, so it's going to be a little bit of a different setup. And NCB, the NCBs. Then you see for the NCBs. This is the uh, boiler feed. Comes back here. As you can see, there's a Watts backflow check valve. Watts check valve. So. It's going to prevent backflow to the potable water. And then we have, this is the uh, primary loop, and then we're getting into the secondary loop here. So I went with the uh, Taiko, the um, 4900 series air separator, inch and a quarter. That's piped over to my Axiom Hydro node. This thing's pretty cool. I mean, it's worth the money, I think. comes with all the fittings. The uh, pressure gauge, the uh, expansion tank service valve here. You know, you don't have to drain the system down to change the uh, expansion tank. This is a manual air separator. This is the Kalefi air separator. It comes All comes with it. All comes with the unit. See, notice how it has a, a valve for the Kalefi here. Beautiful. Worth the money. I think it was like... Uh, couple hundred dollars but okay here's the uh, this is the uh, supply that's the return so these two manifolds supply return so the supply I went with the uh, Taco 007 zone pumps got the uh, service valves for it now as you can see these uh, these service valves, like an idiot, I put them on backwards. <laughs> and I noticed after I pressed them, they were on backwards. So, but I did add two new ones. You know, I added new ones on the other side of the, uh, on the other side of the loop. So, but you know what? Now I could uh, flush out the, uh, the manifolds without draining the, uh, without draining the zone down. There you go. Not that much of an idiot, am I? So here we go. And then I would flush that out through this bottom drain here, the uh, secondary manifold. Shut these valves off. You got access to your, to your manifold. There's also on this, uh, this is the uh, NaviClean here. It's a magnetic separator. So any, uh, you know, mag any uh, magnetic material in the, uh, in the water is separated. There's a post inside, a magnetic post. It does have valves on the back, so you can isolate it. You can isolate the loops, too. You can isolate prime, the uh, return and supply. But um, if it, I know they say closely spaced T's, but, you know, I ran some calculations. I got these spaced about 10 inches apart. Any guys out there with uh, experience, let me know what you think about that. 
had a few guys tell me it's going to be fine. Uh, you know, I think I did run it. It runs perfect. Got a good Delta T on it. But uh, let me know in the comments, guys, anybody who experienced. As you can see, I, I did that on the supply and return. I installed these things backwards, and then I just added another one in the opposite direction. We all make mistakes. Don't tell me you guys never did something stupid. All right, so on the back here, domestic hot and cold goes up and over, and it hooks up. Let me show you right there. Hooks up up there, hot and cold, right? This is the uh, venting for the system. I went with a concentric vent outside. It's a four-inch, um, you know, four-inch pipe. So it's a two-inch center, four-inch. So I had to reduce it because it's actually for three-inch piping. So I just did a bushing. This is a non-cellular core PVC for the exhaust here. That's a code in my area. You cannot use cellular core PVC at all. It's Schedule 40 PVC here. It's not cellular core. You cannot use that, and that's a fresh air intake for it. Uh, this, this did not come with my system. I don't know. I've seen some people say it does come with theirs. It did not come with the NFC. So I had to buy that uh, additional. It came with that manifold on the bottom. It was all one piece. So it comes with the Kalefi. Uh, half inch air separator here, pressure relief valve, came down, terminates within six inches of the floor, got a, you know, my gas pipe in here, I used to have an old oil boiler, so that was the, the B flow for the, uh, you know, you know the, the chimney for the old oil fired boiler. So I went to propane. I don't have natural gas in my area. The propane conversion for this is very simple. Uh, you got to follow the directions. You got to change, you know, the orifice in there on the gas valve. It's very important, though, to follow directions and never work on gas, you know, equipment. If you don't have experience, you need to contact a professional. You need to have it inspected. Um, you know, I'm not, this is not a tutorial how to do you know, you guys got to figure that out. You have to do it the right way. Call a professional. If you're not a professional, this is a, a serious piece of equipment, and it can cause a lot of damage to your home. If if it can cause death too, you know, it's a, it's very dangerous to work with propane or gas. So if you're not a professional, do not try to install this on your own. Not that I'm a I'm not a professional, but I chose to do it on my own. So here's my uh, you know gas piping. I got a uh, propane detector down there in case you ever get a leak. Propane's heavier than air. So you it, you have to put that detector as low as possible. So I got it sitting down there. I also hooked up a uh, hot water hose reel here. Um, you know, whenever you're draining the system or, you know, got to got to bleed a zone or something, get a hose out and, ha you know, wrestle with it and it's a big mess. No, I'm not doing that anymore. So I got a hose reel here to do this, you know, four, you know, four in the morning when you got a problem, you know, you got to flush your system or something. You got to do some work. It's easy. And I got two hoses here so I can hook up my uh, transfer pump in between them. Or I could just hook it up to they, this hose is six feet. The initial, the uh, primary hose is six feet. It reaches all the, uh, the valves here in this system. So I can hook it up to all those valves. Or I can have a 12-foot hose, you know, if, I, if need be. Also have uh, water here if I got to flush, you know, flush a zone or do some, you know, flush the uh, the heat exchanger when I service the uh, domestic hot water. You know, I got everything here. These are, uh, it's very important with a combi boiler or a tankless water heater to have good quality water. So, you know, I got a, uh, you know, I got the house filter water softener. I got a great, you know, awesome water system here. I got two, uh, you know, carbon, carbon, uh, media tanks, water softener. I know you guys are going to say that filters dirty and, uh, trust me. I know we're having some well issues here, a lot of sediment in the well. So I'm having that addressed this Friday. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull the well pump up about 20 feet and replace it. I'm going to be putting in a, uh, a uh, constant pressure system 
Um, maybe I'll have a video on that too. I'll show you guys how to do that. But yeah, and uh, so let's take a look down here at the condensate. So this comes with a, a trap already. This comes with the actual unit. This is a trap right here. So I came out with some uh, half an inch PVC. There's a union right here. Comes down over to the neutralizer, down into the condensate pump. And then the discharge is coming up the wall here. Comes over and over to this Y right here. So this Y, it's a brass Y threaded into that ABS. It's been there for years. I didn't do that. So doesn't leak, pipe doped, and, and Teflon taped the hell out of it. So it's good. Then we got two swing check valves here. I had to go with the Y swing check valves and cut a little hole out of the ceiling because of clearance issues, threading those on. But that's for the uh, the one on the left is for the uh, water softener. One on the right is for the combi boiler. Thermostat, I had to put a junction box in here for the uh, thermostat wire uh, just because I had the boiler. The boiler was in this area right here. Let me zoom back out. Boiler was right here in this area right here. So the thermostat wire was way too short to reach over into the boiler. I didn't want to run it, you know, sloppily. So I just ran it over here across, came down with it, came in. This thermostat wire goes out to the exterior temperature sensor for the unit. And uh, yeah, so the way I wired it, we had a, uh, I had the boiler switch here. This is a uh, regular 110, um, has, a, has a plug on it for 110 volts. So what I did was I put these four outlets in, switched outlets, you know, for the unit and the condensate. So it runs off that emergency switch. And then this is the light switch for the area. And then I have a service outlet up here. So we have something for constant power when you got the unit off, you know, with the emergency switch. Or you could just unplug it. There's also a switch inside the unit, but, you know, an emergency or just working on, you want to hit the switch, you want to start taking covers off and everything. It's much easier. Yep, so, and then, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Any comments? Curious about this manifold here. You know, I, I've heard, I've heard that it's fine. I heard that, you know, they're a little too far apart. It should be closely, closer space, but. It is running great. Got a good Delta T on it. Not sure. You know, I think it's I think it's going to be fine. But, uh, yeah, any comments, put them down in the comments section below, guys. And I want to give a shout-out to Jim Speranza, his uh, YouTube. I got the inspiration from his YouTube. He builds these systems, specs them out. I didn't talk to him, but, you know, I did – I did uh, his YouTube channel gave me a lot of great ideas. And, uh, you know, I appreciate it. It's Almost exactly, uh, you know, what he's building over there. So give him a shout out. I think he builds these for customers and sells them, ships them out in a crate. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, see you on future videos.